If you didn't know, I've started a Discord server, so come join if you want to talk, and if you don't care, then never mind. Jojo Rabbit was my favourite film from last year, one I really wanted to make a video on, but I didn't want to just say the same stuff everyone else has said who's made videos on it, so I decided I'd leave it several months, come back and watch it again, and see what else I could say. So I watched it again for the second time the other day, and the ending of the film is fantastic. Jojo and Elsa leaving the house to her discovery that the war's over, standing on the doorstep, Jojo asking Elsa what to do now, and she just slowly starts dancing, and he joins in, Heroes by David Bowie starts playing in German and it's just a beautifully hopeful way to end a film that has been set in one of the most tragic horrific times in modern history. And they dance without any explanation. No words are needed because we remember how it links back to earlier in the film when Jojo asked Elsa What's the first thing you'll do when you're free? and to even earlier because the idea of dancing is a theme weaved throughout the film in Rosie's explanation We have to dance to show God we are grateful to be alive and earlier than that in getting Jojo to dance with her and pretend dad at the moment when he's feeling most angry and sorry for himself Dancing in this film is a theme that expresses the need to fight for love and joy and beauty in the face of despair. Life is a gift. Coincidentally, I talked a bit about the power of dance in my video on Bender from The Breakfast Club, but it's a thing of freedom and expression that you can choose to do. Hence Rosie, Jojo's mum, dancing her way through the war because she chooses to have hope and to trust in beauty and that there is a way forwards, as the final quote at the end of the film emphasises. In that sense, there's times where hope and joy requires a tremendous amount of courage, when suffering is on all sides. It can take a warrior-like mentality at times, to not give in, but to remain playful and dancing in your journey through life. In that sense, it reminds me that Aurora song, Warrior. The point is, there's a lot of great symbolism and motifs and parallels in this film, which I wanted to talk about, because I think they're more important than people often realise in stories. The thing is, we think and communicate in symbols. It was our language long before actual language was invented, although even that is still symbolism, it's just a very well-ordered system of symbols, where we know the sound apple symbolises this piece of fruit, or the sound fear symbolises this specific emotion and bodily sensation we've all had experiences of. Films and stories use a lot of symbolism and recurring motifs and parallel lines or moments that call back to earlier moments, because all of it speaks directly to our deeper, more unconscious mind and we take the messages in even if we don't notice them consciously we we understand it as an emotional language so in light of that we're just going to run through a load of motifs and symbols and everything else in the film jojo rabbit to highlight how they can enrich a story and add to its depth obviously there's going to be spoilers as well anyone who knows the film already knows what i'm talking about if you haven't seen it please don't watch this yet it will ruin one of the most heartfelt moments of the film see jojo rabbit then come back Otherwise, let's get started. Is it dangerous? Extremely. I'll start with a more obvious parallel rather than an actual motif, which is that at the beginning of the film where Jojo is tentative about leaving the house after his accident, his mum G's him up to go out with a mock rallying speech as though he was heading into a war that ends with the lines Is it dangerous? Extremely before they leave the house. It's a nice moment that introduces us to Rosie's courageous, loving side, but also highlighting Jojo's fear and insecurity about his scars, but the moment comes back around again at the end of the film when Jojo's pretended Germany won the war and that he's going to help Elsa escape, where she says, Is it dangerous out there? Extremely. Then they leave the house, which demonstrates the progression of Jojo as a character, the courage he has since learned so that he can be more like his mum was when he needs to be. The knife. I talked about love and joy and beauty as something to fight for in this film, but the knife is a motif suggesting the opposite of that, fighting without love, but um, to, to destroy things at its simplest, I guess. <laughs> Jojo gets the knife at the Hitler Youth Camp, no stabbing! where he treats it like a fun toy, where the idea of killing Jews is just a fun game in a child's mind, because he's too young to really be aware of the horror it causes, it's just a toy in his eyes, until it then turns to horror when he's confronted with a real Jew, Elsa, who he feels he's supposed to attack and kill, but she steals his knife. With the knife, she's now the scary one with power who threatens to cut off his head. The knife is a thing of destruction and hatred in that sense, which Jojo starts to slowly realise as the film goes on. It's not just a toy, just as the Nazis aren't really all that fun. 
and the knife is later given back to him when the Gestapo officer asks where it is and points out that a member of the Hitler Youth should always have his knife on him because without it, he's not really a Nazi. He's just someone dressing up like one. You're a 10 year old kid who likes fasticas and likes dressing up in a funny uniform and wants to be part of a club. And then it's actually Captain K who gives the knife back to him with the sense Jojo should use it to defend his family. In that way it's suggesting using the knife as a thing of protection, but symbolically it's not really that in this film because this scene leads pretty quickly to him stabbing Elsa in a moment of distress after finding his mum hanging in the town square. All the knife brings him to is vengeance. Stabbing Elsa is his act of revenge and care for his mum in a warped way. It's his last ditch attempt to follow the sort of path the Nazis set down for him and when it fails and he collapses into tears at the loss of his mum and Elsa comes down to comfort him, the knife is abandoned for good. Jojo finally learns to let it go, this thing of destructive power that has torn the world apart. Shoes. I don't really need to point this one out because we all know it and if you're anything like me it made you cry. I mean that is the power of a symbol really, it's more moving to just see her shoes than it is to see Rosie herself hanging. We're introduced to the shoes through close up shots and of course they link back to the theme of dancing when we see Rosie dancing through this shot of the shoes. Um, and all three share symbolism in that sense, the shoes, Rosie and dancing. All three are an expression of love and joy in the face of despair. That's that's the heart of Rosie's character in this film. So when she sees the shoes hanging there, it symbolises the death of that. It's the low point in the film that leads straight into Jojo attempting to stab Elsa, where, had he succeeded, he might have fallen further into despair. Only Elsa stops him and then comforts him and helps him to choose the right path, which is to have all the stuff Rosie and the shoes have symbolised live on through Jojo and Elsa instead, which we see in having them dance at the end. It's the perfect ending in that sense, especially because Elsa is wearing Rosie's shoes at this point. Tying shoes. Attached to this is also the motif of tying shoelaces, which is something you do to prepare yourself for facing the outside world. Rosie does it for Jojo at the beginning of this film and teaches him how to tie his shoes. She later ties his shoes together as a joke and leaves him to sort them out, which comes at a moment after talking to Jojo about the importance of love, which makes the idea of having to sort out his own shoes feel like Rosie gently encouraging him to start growing up in a sort of sort yourself out, you've got to start leaving these childish visions of Hitler behind and start looking for love in the world to grow up. Which is also the first moment of the film where Hitler seems properly distant from Jojo. And then Jojo later ties the loose shoe on his mum's foot which is just a simple act of love and care but it maybe it suggests preparing her to step out into the outside world of death but it also demonstrates the fact he's learned from her and then again we see him tie those same shoes on Elsa right before they leave at the end. Ghosts. There's various mentions of ghosts in this film. The noise of Elsa moving about upstairs, Rosie suggests that it could be Inga's ghost. Then the horror-like way Elsa is introduced, coming out of the wall in Inga's bedroom, aligns her with being this idea of a ghost. The photo of Inga in her passport when Elsa pretends to be her is described as looking like a ghost. And there's the mention of the kind little boy that was Jojo becoming a ghost as he's fallen deeper into fanaticism. That your only remaining child is not just another ghost. Perhaps all ghosts now, we just don't know it. Possibly the idea of ghosts then is about something good coming back as a scary haunting thing. This nice boy lost beneath blind ideology. The idea of Elsa as the ghost of Inga says a lot about the way Jojo sees her because his sister was perfect in his eyes. The idea of anyone else coming in and taking her place, living in her bedroom wearing her clothes is something horrific for him. Especially if it's a Jew. That feels like an insult to Inga's memory, however, slowly, they start to connect and Jojo starts to see her a bit like a sister. She comes to properly play that role in the family to the extent she literally pretends to be Inga when the Gestapo come. There's also various parallels that make Elsa like Rosie, such as in these two shots where first it's Rosie bathing and Jojo sitting outside, then it's Elsa bathing with Jojo sitting outside. There's also this dress she wears and, like I've said, the shoes. All of it comes to suggest she's not just the ghost of a sister and family member, but someone who has become an actual family member, a real person to connect with rather than a faded version of Inga. And in the absence of both mum and dad, Jojo and Elsa have grown to fulfil those roles and to support each other equally as a family unit. Cigarettes. 
This one's just a simple one. Hitler keeps offering Jojo cigarettes despite the fact Jojo's 10 years old, which is just a nice way to suggest maybe the advice Hitler gives isn't the best advice. Maybe he's not good with kids and, you know, maybe that the Hitler youth arming kids with knives and explosives is really equally as harmful as giving kids cigarettes would be. Hitler leaving through the window. Less a motif than a nice parallel, but early in the film Hitler dives out of the window like a superhero after helping Jojo with some advice. And then at the end of the film Jojo kicks him out of the same window. Fuck off Hitler! <laughs> and it's like a villain's death at the end of a superhero film, which just nicely shows how Hitler's transformed from a hero to a villain in Jojo's eyes. Jojo's scars. The scars are a nice motif that is neatly weaved into the overall theme of beauty and ugliness in this film. Because ugliness is a thing that's often talked about and the Jews are all ugly beings whereas the Aryan race is perfect and Jojo is part of that perfect race except things flip on its head when Jojo gets these scars and suddenly sees himself as this hideous ugly thing. From Jojo's point of view the Nazis are doing a glorious thing in beating back the ugliness of the world, eradicating it all so only perfect beautiful things can exist. but. Jojo's scars undermine that very idea because they are a thing of ugliness in his mind that will still exist no matter what race or culture or any set thing they might label as ugly is eradicated from the world. And obviously the Jews are not ugly, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to say that. The only ugliness in this film is the oppression and the genocide of the Nazi party. Jojo gets his scars from the Hitler youth camp messing about with explosives that are far too dangerous for a 10 year old boy that should never have been given to him. The scars in that sense are an image of the ugliness you find in yourself when you try to eradicate it from the world around you. Artists The opposite to this idea of ugliness is beauty, which brings us back to the beauty of dance and music and all the things Rosie championed, but I've already discussed that, so let's highlight the repeated mention of artists throughout this film, um, be it like the poet Rilke, who was Nathan's favourite and who is referenced at the end of the film, or Elsa's dreams of being an artist. It's fitting that in Jojo's book, You Who Jude, full of ugly, dark drawings of people being tortured, the beautiful picture amongst them all is the one drawn by Elsa. And there's a simple point she makes in the middle of the film when Jojo's feeling sorry for himself, and she suggests drawing a picture of him. Jojo says nobody wants to see pictures of a cripple, and she replies, No, I see a cripple. Besides, true artists don't see that stuff. And that's the point. Artists see the beauty in life. They look beyond the ugliness. As Rosie herself did not see Jojo as ugly with his scars, but as her beautiful son, as Elsa searches to see beauty despite the despair. But also ugly things. Jews love ugliness. You love them, yes? Artists come to symbolise that in this film, seeing the beauty and the love. And there's a tragic irony you see in those driven to eradicate ugliness from the world, as the Nazis probably convinced themselves they were doing. The irony is the more you're trying to eradicate ugliness means the more you're focused on ugliness, which means the more you lose sight of beauty and love and instead fall deep into the very darkness you sought to oppose. In being a soldier with a knife and gun and ideas of torture, you become the ugliness, whereas a warrior of love and art and joy and dance and beauty and all that sort of stuff, they may eradicate nothing at all, but instead they reveal the beauty beneath things the kind heart beneath the fanatical 10 year old Nazi, the hope, the reasons people ever wanted to dance in the first place. Unicorns. In light of this point about beauty is the fact that before the moment that Hitler jumps out of the window like a superhero, he says, Ooh, I gotta go. We're having unicorn for dinner at my place tonight. Which sounds like a fun, fantastical throwaway line. To Jojo, that's just an example of the magical, wonderful sort of life his hero Hitler leads, and yet, Later in the film we see this montage where the image of Hitler eating a unicorn is pretty horrific. I mean, which of course it is. Unicorns are the classic, beautiful, innocent mythological creature that is never meant to be killed. It's a crime against nature to kill unicorns. And let's not forget that throughout this film Jews are repeatedly said to have horns on the front of their heads. Where's the horns? Under there. Logically the idea of horns is linked more to the devil, but the very idea of a unicorn is evidence that horns aren't just ugly, evil, satanic things. That horns can be an image of beauty too. Obviously Jews do not have horns, but with that in mind, you can see the link being made between them and unicorns in this film. The innocent unicorn eaten by Hitler that it's a crime against nature to kill. 
And again, I guess from an artist's point of view, they'd see unicorns in everybody rather than seeing horns as the sign of a devil in people. Girlfriend. The point is made several times to Jojo that one day he'll grow up and fall in love. Ridiculous. Which in itself sums up everything I've already spent far too long saying, that Jojo needs to grow up and find love and beauty instead of ugliness. Why does everyone keep telling me that? He pretty quickly falls for Elsa, really, but he doesn't know how to show or express his love, so his only means of showing it is through his jealous attacks against Nathan, who was Elsa's boyfriend. He writes pretend letters from Nathan saying how he's broken up with Elsa, whilst also calling Nathan unemployed and that he's gotten very fat, and obviously there's the drawings of Nathan being killed and tortured and everything else. He loves Elsa, but all he can bear to show right now is the jealous rage, and then a bit later he's developing, and he's able to pretend to Yoki that Elsa is his girlfriend. Oh, good for you, Jojo, a girlfriend! Which is obviously a lie, but it's a sign of him admitting the feelings to himself. And then finally he's reached the level of maturity where he can admit to Elsa that The thing is, I love you. Being able to openly express that sort of feeling is a sign that he's matured into quite a loving person. And I mean, if the heart of this film is about the courage to express and see love rather than hate, obviously the idea of boyfriends and girlfriends and all that stuff is one good way to demonstrate it, so that, that makes sense as an obvious motif. The windows have eyes. After Jojo discovers his mum in the courtyard, we get several shots of the houses where the windows look like spying eyes, which is a brilliantly creative way to convey the feeling of this scary Gestapo spy network where any of your neighbours might report on you, and how that kind of environment and the fear makes it impossible to feel safe or to trust anyone. And then after the battle we see the shots again of houses, only this time they've been blown apart by explosives and the eyes are desolate or are just missing entirely. It tells us, for one, the spy network and that culture it creates is gone, whilst at the same time it's a pretty sad image of a community being destroyed. These bleak, empty looking faces of the houses now remind us there's death on both sides of any war, whether the cause is just or not, that many innocent people will have been living in those houses who have just had their homes destroyed and possibly themselves alongside them. It's important to have a shot like this in the film, I think. It doesn't need to be some massive point, just a small reminder of the contradiction that's at the heart of everything I've said. Because as much as it is about seeing beauty, it wasn't a collection of artists that stopped Hitler. It was other armies across the world, it was violence and ugliness that stopped him. I've accused the mindset of trying to eradicate ugliness as one that only festers more ugliness within yourself, and the US and British and Russian forces and all of them have tried to eradicate the Nazis, and therefore left their own trail of ugliness in their way. That's not to say the war was unjustified at all, it's just an important reminder that war naturally comes with its own horror. So when the Allied forces come, it is a good thing, they've liberated this town from tyranny and horror but it was at the cost of death and innocent lives being destroyed. We're meant to feel sad about that. The battle is done, the hope is now that the artists can return and teach the world and show the world how to see through the lens of beauty and to repair. In that sense we're meant to feel sad here, we're meant to feel horrified when Captain K gets executed just as Jojo is horrified. We're not meant to be sitting there thinking, good, that's one more Nazi eradicated, you know? It's just nice that in a subtle way the film hints to this other side of the war, I guess, um, that there's still a lot of horror that people will still need the courage of love and dance if they want to find their way through it, otherwise that the world will revert to ugliness again. Rabbit. It's in the title, it's kind of like Jojo's spirit animal in this film. The humble bunny is what separates Jojo from those cruel and vicious. Jojo thinks the Nazis are cool and glorious and everything, but when it comes down to it, he's a sensitive kid. He won't snap the neck of an innocent rabbit because it's cruel. In their eyes that makes him a weak, frightened rabbit, and that thought does get to him a little, that maybe he's too weak and scared to be a, like, like a proper man and <laughs> member of Hitler's personal guards, but I suppose a rare piece of good advice that Hitler gives in this film is that Jojo should be the rabbit because it has strengths of its own, which is a moment of comic irony really because that's the complete opposite to Hitler's philosophy of the superior Aryan race, but in Jojo's mind that's what Hitler says here and it's basically true. You know, not that being a rabbit should mean picking up a grenade and going off in a war charge, but that it should mean having the courage to follow his sensitivity rather than the power and domination and, you know, the path of the knife. 
Had Jojo killed that rabbit, he would have been symbolically killing part of himself. The part with soul, the part that grows throughout this film, that's his character arc really. Where we see the rabbit return at the moment he and Elsa are getting on best, and finally we get this drawing of his. We see the picture just when Jojo has lied to Elsa, saying that Germany won the war because he's afraid Elsa will leave him otherwise. He wants to keep her here, he doesn't want to lose her. But then he sees this picture in his book and realises he has to tell her the truth. In that sense it's partly Elsa in the cage here that he's freeing in this moment, but it's also himself he's freeing. It's his heart and sensitivity. It's him remembering why he didn't kill the rabbit before and why he was right not to. He's freeing himself to do the right thing, to be a good person. And to trust Elsa, you know, to trust that she won't leave him even if she could. To trust that she loves him in return. As a younger brother. As a younger brother. Look a tiger in the eye. Trust without fear. Speaking of trust is this line from Rosie. Look a tiger in the eye. And trust without fear. That's what it is to be a woman. The tiger she's talking about is the state of the world itself. The war. Germany. The concept of evil. She trusts that there's hope. That goodness will return to the world. She trusts that in Jojo there's still a little boy who loves. The little boy who who loves to play and runs to you because he's scared of thunder, thinks you invented chocolate cake. To look a tiger in the eye and trust without fear is to look straight into the darkness of the world and trust that there's light somewhere beyond it. And it's Jojo specifically in this instance that Elsa's thinking about because she's kind of in a position where she has to trust Jojo to trust that he won't report her to the Gestapo. At first she doesn't trust him at all and so she coerces him with fear and threatens to cut off his head. She becomes like a tiger in that sense towards Jojo. And unwittingly in talking about the tiger, Rosie is telling Elsa to trust Jojo, so she does. And later we see Elsa looking at this painting in the living room. You get there's a sense it's been there as Rosie's daily reminder to trust without fear. Now it's Elsa's. Maybe you can trust your younger brother? Maybe. I wouldn't know if I saw it. As a final one, I'll give this small little parallel. After discovering Elsa, Jojo talks to Captain K about what he's supposed to do if he sees a Jew, to which he then gets questioned. Did you see one? A Jew? I'm not sure I'd be able to tell if I did. And then when Rosie later tells him that Love is the strongest thing in the world. And after he argues that metal is the strongest thing in the world, he says Besides, I wouldn't even know it if I saw it. Which is just a nice little touch to suggest Jojo's love for Elsa, even if he's yet to realise it or admit it to himself. Um, so, as far as lists go, that wasn't the most well-ordered, nor probably the most comprehensive list, um, but it is very long either way. I've only seen the film twice, so I imagine there's a lot of stuff I've missed, or I could have drawn into what I was saying better, um, let me know. This has been a long video now though, so I'm just gonna end it here. Thanks for watching, give it a like if you liked it, and hopefully see you next time.